In this video, we're going to look at three related ideas. A discrete random variable, the values of the random variable, and the probability distribution of the random variable. We'll look at three random situations. Consider this spinner. Consider rolling two dice. And consider selecting a card at random from some subset of UNO cards. There are many random variables that could be associated with each of these situations. Let's take the spinner for example. One random variable could be what, what number turns up when you spin the spinner once. So the random variable in that case is what number shows up. Now notice on this spinner that there's 4, a 7, a 4, a 7, a 2, and a 7. So the values, the possible values for the random variable are 2, 4, and 7. Another random variable for this situation could be what are the number of times that 4 shows up if you spin the spinner 5 times? So you'd spin the, the, it turned up once, it turned, no, no, uh, nope, 4, it turned up 2 out of 5 times on that particular case. In, in that random variable, the number of times that 4 shows up in 5 spins of the spinner, the values of the random variable, it might show up 0 times, it might show up 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 times. This information is summarized in a handout associated with this video. If the random variable is the number obtained by one spin of the spinner, then in, on this spinner that we are looking at, then the random the values of the random variable are 2, 4, and 7. Now make a distinction between what the random variable is and what the values of the random variable are. On the other hand, the number of times that 4 shows up in 5 spins of the spinner, it could show up 0 times or 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 times. Make a distinction between what the random variable is and what the values of the random variable are. In the case of rolling two die, there, there could be a number of different random variables here. For example, it could be the number that shows up on one roll of the dice. So the possibilities there would be a 2, a 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12. Those are the only things that could show up. In this case, I rolled a, a 6. In this case, a 3. On the other hand, the random variable might be the number of times that the number 7 occurs when we roll the dice 5 times. So then we're worried about rolling the dice five times. It's not a seven, uh, not a seven, uh, a seven once, four, five times. We got one out of out of the five times on that particular uh, trial. So it's when it's the number of times that uh, the number seven occurs when the dice is rolled five times, the possible values of the random variable are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Make a distinction between the random variable and the values of the random variable. Now if we had this subset of UNO cards, there's a number of different random variables that could be involved there. One is just pick a card at random and find out uh, what the number on the card is. Uh, notice that we had a 2 and a 3 and a 4 and a 6 and an 8, a 1 and a couple of a uh, couple more 4s. So uh, the, the possible values of that random variable are going to be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, or 8. One of those numbers are the, are the value that shows up in the random variable. But we could look at a different random variable with this same situation. We could say, well, what's the, what's the number of times that a green card is selected from the subset of UNO cards in three trials? Okay, well, there's three green cards, 
But when we shuffle them up and pick a card at random, so suppose that I carefully shuffled these. Let's pretend that it's, it's well shuffled. I pick a card. Okay, there's one green card. I shuffle them again very carefully. Pick a, ah, two green cards. And I shuffle the card again. And three, I got three out of three. The possibilities here, when we pick at random uh, a card from this deck, we might get no green cards in all three tries. We might get one green card, or two green cards, or three green cards. Those six examples are summarized in the handout. Make a distinction between the random variable and the values that the random variable can take on. Now let's look at the probability distribution for each of those six cases. If the random variable is what number shows up when you spin the spinner, then there are three possibilities. You could either get a, a 2, a 4, or a 7. Those are the only numbers that show up on here. Some numbers, like 4, ends up twice, and 7 ends up three times. So if we were to build a, a probability distribution for this, then it looks like this. There's one chance in six, because there were six pie pieces in the, in the spinner. There's one chance in six of us getting a two. There's one chance in three, that is two chances in six, of getting a four. And there are three chances in six, or one half, probability of one half of getting a seven. So the probability distribution is showing how the random variable is distributed. Now consider the probability distribution for the random variable that's looking at the number of times that 4 shows up in 5 spins of the spinner. An R script is provided in the handout. Let's just walk through that R script. First of all, we'll build the, a vector containing all of the possible answers. This 0, and 0 colon 5 field is a short way in R of building the vector that contains 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. You can start with any integer uh, colon, any other integer, and, that, and R will build the vector that starts at that beginning integer and ends at the ending integer. So those are the possibilities. When we spin the spinner five times, each one of those times we might get a four or we might not. So we might get zero fours, one four, two four, three four, four fours, or five fours as we do that. So the random, the values of the random variable are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now make a distinction between the values of the random variable and the random variable. Now this is a binomial distribution. So we could calculate the probability of each one of those individual values by doing a d-binome. D-binome can actually work on that entire vector and find all of those probabilities uh, at once, and we've saved that in a vector called px, and then a data frame. So let's read what the data frame says. The probability of getting zero uh, fours is a little less than four-tenths of a percent, a little more than four-tenths of a percent. The probability of getting exactly one is that same amount. Probability of getting two fours in five spins is going to be about 16 uh, percent. So the probability of getting three fours is, is almost 33 percent. The probability of getting four fours is again 33 percent, pretty close. And uh, the probability of getting all five fours is 13 percent. So if the random variable is, what is the number on the card that is picked at random from this subset, then the possible values of the random variable are 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 6, or 8. 
and there's only one chance in seven of getting a one, or one chance in seven of getting a two, or one chance in seven of getting a three, but there's two chances in seven of getting a four, a one chance in seven of getting a six, and a one chance in seven of getting an eight. If, however, if, however, the random variable is how many times do you draw a green at random from this set, if you're times, if you're draw, picking at random from this set three times, how, how many times do you get a green card um, out of that subset? Then the random variable changes. Now it's a binomial probability. You pick the first card, you've got a a four chances out of seven of, of picking a green one. You put that back in, you draw another one, you've got four chances out of seven of picking that green one. So we need to be able to recognize that this is a binomial uh, probability in that particular case. Here's a more generalized R script that's health calculation. Notice that we're looking at three trials because we're going to draw a card put the card back, draw a card again, put the card back, each time looking to see if we're getting a green card. The probability of us getting a green card from this subset that we're looking at is 4 out of 7. So that's the probability of success in any individual trial. We want to build a vector that shows us the possible values of the random variable. We might draw a card uh, three times and uh, and get zero green cards in all three trials. We might get one green card, two green cards, or three green cards. So we're using that shortcut cut in R to build that vector containing zero, one, two, and three. Then we'd like to find the probability associated with each one of those values. This is a binomial probability. So we'll do the D binom of X with n is 3, so x was that vector, 0, 1, 2, and 3, n is 3, and the probability of success on any one of those individual trials is 4 out of 7. So here's our data frame. The probability of getting exactly 0 uh, green cards is uh, close to 8%. The probability of getting one green card is uh, a little over 31 percent. The probability of getting two green cards is close to 42 percent. And the probability of getting three green cards drops again. It's around 19 percent. So now let's think of the random variable of rolling two dice and seeing what the the sum of the, of the two are. So that's a, an eight. That one was a seven and so on. Okay, the thing to look at here is that when you roll those dies, there there are 36 things that could could happen. That's because the white die has six different possibilities, and the red die has six different possibilities. So there's 36 different events, equally likely events that could could occur. Of those 36, there's only one way that we could get two. That would be when uh, both the uh, white die and the red die both turn up as one. Similarly, there's one chance in 36 of getting a 12. Uh, both of the dice would have to be sixes uh, for us to end up getting a 12. On the other hand, there's a lot of ways of getting a 7. We could get a, a, a 5 and a 2. We could get a 2 and a 5. And that's illustrated in this chart. You could get a 1 and a 6, a 2 and a 5, a 3 and a 4, a 4 and a 3, a 5 and a 2, and a 6 and a 1. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 ways out of the 36 so we could get a 7. So I've left those as exercises in the uh, in the handout. Fill out the rest of this chart. For example, if you rolled a 2 a white and a 3 on the red, you, there'd be a 5 here and so on. Then you could build the probability distribution uh, 
because it's going to be a table. What's the probability of getting a three? You'd have to look at all the different ways that you could get a three and and out of the 36, this should be one out of 36 and not one out of 37 there. Okay, corrected. So uh, you can fill out the rest of that probability distribution table. But now if the random variable was, how many times the does the number seven occur when you roll the dice a total of five times? How many out of the five times do you end up with a seven? Then that's a binomial distribution now, and a binomial probabilities. So uh, n is going to be five because there's, we're going to roll this five times. The probability of getting a seven, remember we calculated that earlier. It's uh, six chances in 36, or one-sixth is that probability. Uh, the possible answers here is that we could get a, uh, it could show up zero times, one time, two times, three times, four times, or five times. So we could calculate the probability of, uh, of each of those happening by doing a d binome of that vector x, where there's n trials is 5, the probability of success on any individual trial is 1 sixth. So that would produce that probability vector over here. And then just put them together in a data frame. So the probability of, of getting zero uh, sevens is about 40%. The probability of getting exactly one is around 40%. The probability of getting two is around 16%. And then the probability of getting three, it drops down to, uh, to a little over 3%, um, three tenths of a percent for four, and about one in a, a thousand chances of all five of the, all five times that you roll that of getting a seven. There are three important things that you're trying to, to relate here and distinguish the differences in. One is what a discrete random variable is, uh, the values that that discrete random variable can take on, and the probability distribution for that random variable.